What's up, everyone? So I think I got all the crying out of the way in the video that I just filmed um, for my Alpha M YouTube channel. So I'm feeling like I can talk a little bit about it. Um, so as some of you may know or that follow me on social media, um, my friend, business partner, and hairstyling soulmate, Stephen Posta, went to the big salon in the sky. He passed away this past Saturday after a 13 year battle with cancer. Um, the crazy thing, when I was sitting there talking to him um, before he died, um, he and I were talking just a little bit about everything and you know, sort of reminiscing about you know, just how we met and how long we've known each other and he made a comment, his family was there and um, he made a comment to his family um, that, uh, that he and I were, were supposed to meet and um, that made me that made me that made me feel good anyway we were going down like just memory lane just like thinking and talking about the kind of like everything that that we'd been through and um, you know the craziest thing is that you know when he got diagnosed with cancer the first time he, they gave him three years to live and he lived for 13 years you know and that in my mind is like crazy awesome. And one of the things that was crazy not awesome was one of the last trips that he took to MD Anderson. Um, okay, so let me back up. This year's been a hard year for Steven. Um, and the thing is like, ever since he's gotten diagnosed with cancer, it's always been one of those things where he is such a tough son of a bitch and he's such a warrior, right? He's always just kind of like taking it, right? Taking it in stride, like, okay, well, this is what's going on. How do we fix it? What do I do? What's the next step, right? It never was like, now I don't know if it like in the old days was like, oh my gosh, poor me or anything like that, but he was always just so like stoic in his approach to this. Now the truth is I'm sure that he was, you know, falling apart in private or around other people, but you know, to me, he was always very stoic. And to the people that he loved and that were around him on a regular basis, he was just Stephen and he was stoic. And he was a stud. He wasn't going anywhere, right? He was going to battle it, right? And so anytime you'd see a picture of Stephen and he was given the middle finger, right? That basically is a testament to fuck cancer. There's a hashtag fuck cancer, basically. Stephen had a hat, like that's the thing. And, um, and so he's been fighting this thing for the past 13 years, but the last trip that he took to MD Anderson, which was probably about, I guess about four months ago, um, they were talking about his lung because he got pneumonia in one of his lungs like twice in a very short amount of time. And it turns out that, that the tumor in his lung, because he had lung cancer, he also had other kinds of cancer, but the lung cancer, one of the tumors that had previously been like kept at bay and not growing because of this little like chemo pill that he was on on a daily basis, it was keeping it pretty much cool. But then the tumor started to grow, so they had to change medications. Long story short, the tumor grew to the point of him not being able to like clear his lungs, and so he ended up de developing pneumonia in, in one of his lungs a few times. And he went to MD Anderson, and they were talking, and he was talking to the doctor, and he asked the doctor, he goes, well, doc, how long do I have? And the doc, I think, like looked at him and laughed and said, you passed that 10 years ago. And I think that was kind of like a very eye-opening experience and comment for Stephen, also for his friends and family. But Stephen didn't like it to talk about his sickness. He never really opened up about it all that much. If you asked him, he would talk about it. But he was too busy living his life. And that's the thing. And that was something that I was so inspired by. Stephen lived life. Stephen lived his life, right? He wasn't sitting there like, oh, poor me. He was dealing with it. He just also happened to have cancer and he was fighting it every single fucking day of his life. But towards the end, it got a little bit more apparent that things were not good in terms of his lung. And, um, you know, they had talked a little bit about, you know, oh, well, we could remove part of it or maybe a lung transplant. Like there were options as of like just a few months ago. And so we always were like, you know, or at least I was always like, okay, this is going to be another one of those times, right? I used to joke with them about, I'd say to him, I go, Stephen, you literally have like nine cancer lives. You're like a cat. And he'd always laugh at me or look at me and smile and said, well, hopefully this is just number three. And I'd say, yeah, hopefully this is just number three. But the other day when I went to actually go say goodbye to him because we got word that um, there was nothing else that they could do for him. Um, when I went down to see him, actually I went to see him 
the first time, actually, I guess let me explain how this went. So on Thursday, before he died, I went to say goodbye. He posted a message on Facebook basically saying it was kind of cryptic, but if you knew Stephen, it wasn't cryptic. He was basically saying, actually, I'd like to read it to you, if you don't mind. Um, he says, there comes a time in your life when you look and walk around and ask yourself, did you accomplish everything you needed? And I say, yes. My relationship with God, my friends who are more family to me than anything, successful business, and four great dogs, and relationships that will last forever. He posted that on Thursday morning. And that was the point at which the switch in me in terms of my emotions just got flipped. Up until that point, Thursday morning, I thought something was wrong with me because I was like, I'm like, why am I like, why am I not more sad? Like, why am I not upset? Everybody around me is saying, oh, this is bad. Like, Stephen's probably not going to make it. You got to do this. You got to do that. And I'm like, nah, he'll be all right. Right. Because in my head and my experience for 13 years, it's always been, okay, you've had these speed bumps, but you overcame them. You got there. You're okay. And as of last Monday, the Monday before he died, I went to see him. He, I said, hey, I'm coming to see you. You need anything? He goes, yeah, bring me some alkaline water. So I'm like, all right. So I brought him like two gallons of alkaline water. My buddy Tony bought him uh, some orange Gatorade. And we went and we hung out with him and we we're talking. And he was in great spirits. And he's like, yeah, they're going to go down again. And, um, and they think I might have this like fistula and they might be able to close it and this and that. Because the problem had been now at this point, there was, there was fluid that was building up in his lungs. Come to find out, the tumor basically like ate through his lung tissue and it was leaking like bodily fluid. And so his lungs were starting to fill up. Essentially, he was like drowning, right? And so the first like time he went in for this, of, like three weeks ago, they're like, okay, let us go down. They went down and they basically like scoped it and they sucked everything out. And they're like, all right, you know, we're going to monitor it. But then it started to happen again. They went down again. They're like, okay, we cleared it. He aspirated because like food got in there. But then this past Tuesday, he was going to have the procedure again when they were going to look for this like fistula, which is like this little like tubular thing. And they basically at that point on Tuesday said, there's nothing else we can do. Um, the cancer had gotten so progressive or it grew so much. It ate so much of the tissue and the tissue was degrading. They basically gave him like three days to live. And, um, and so he was calling everybody in to, uh, to basically tell him the news and to say goodbye. And um, Wednesday, um, a lot of people from the salon went. I didn't go. I wanted to be kind of by myself with them. And so I waited until, uh, until Thursday morning. He posted that message on Thursday morning, and that's when I, that's when I lost it. And it's been a real emotional um, thing for me ever since. It's been very, very hard. And, um, you know, it's... <sighs> You know, death is something that, like, like, no matter how much you're prepared for it, I don't think you're ever really prepared for it. Recently, we lost Tracy's mom, and it was really hard. It was hard being there during the process, but you got through it, and, you know, you just, you dealt with it. And it was very sad. But this is different. This is a different kind of sadness, because literally, he was fine, not fine, but he was, like, making plans for, like, the future as of, like, Monday. And it just turned. And um, I shouldn't say it turned. I guess it just progressed. And there was nothing else they could really do. Um, and so, yeah, we're having to deal with it. Everybody's super upset. And the thing that I just want to kind of mention before I kind of wrap this video up, the amount of people that that guy touched in a positive way is unbelievable. It's unbelievably inspiring. All of the well wishes, all the support, all the people coming by the hospital, all the people that are reaching out on social media, people loved that man. It doesn't mean he was a perfect man though. And one of the things that I'm really glad that he and I had our time because up until basically Thursday, um, I had been harboring some resentment and anger towards him for some things that he did or didn't do um, at the salon that I was very upset about in terms of some of the, he, okay, I'm not going to get into that, but he did some things that I was upset about and I was resentful. 
And so during this time, you know, I think that's one of the other reasons why the emotions weren't like flowing like as like normally or as freely as they usually do for me because you guys know that watch me, I'm a pretty emotional dude. Um, I talk about my cats, I get choked up. But I was struggling. I was struggling with feelings of anger still and just this like resentment. But when I went and had time with him and said goodbye on Thursday, everything, they, they talk about it, you know? You put it to bed and, and everything like kind of goes away. It doesn't mean that Stephen was a perfect man. He was an incredible, incredible friend and hairstylist. People loved him. He was compassionate, he was caring, he was incredible. But he wasn't the best boyfriend, he also wasn't the best husband, and he wasn't the best business partner. But it doesn't take away the fact that he has affected so many people in an amazing way. And I think about that, I think about, I think about my life, I think about all of our lives, and I think to myself, if your life and a successful life is measured in the people that love you, the people that lives you, or whose lives you've touched, then Stephen literally was fucking like Noah <laughs> in terms of like Noah's Ark. He lived for like 500 years. You know, unfortunately though, on this world and in this life, he only made it 55 years. But they were 55 years of helping people and doing incredible things for amazing people that love him and will never, ever, ever forget him. You know, the salon is going to keep going. I'll tell you and talk to you a little bit more about that some other time. Um, but Stephen, he, uh, he will be missed and I love him very much. And, um, you know, when I had my time with him, you know, he basically, when I got there, I actually got there twice. I went there the first time and they had just given him something to sleep. And so I get there in the room the first time and it's his family and it's just him sleeping. And it was a very like shallow breath, like, like, and I've seen that breathing before recently with my, my wife's mother. And I'm like, this is not like, he's not going to last past the day. And so I was there for about an hour. I was crying with the family. I was, you know, talking to him and, um, and I ended up leaving and saying my peace and saying my goodbyes then and knowing, okay, you know what? I said what I need to say and, and I'm good, right? And I leave and literally five minutes later, I get a call from Steven's phone and it's his sister. He says, hey, Steven's awake and he wants to talk to you. Can you come back? I said, absolutely. So I went back to actually say goodbye and he kicked everybody out of the room. We held hands and, uh, and it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And I actually told him, I said, you know, you've been a real pain in my ass lately. And he goes, likewise. And, um, you know, he also uh, thanked me for everything that I've done for him, and I thanked him for everything he's done for me, and uh, it was beautiful. We had, 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 our, had our time, and we were able to say goodbye, but that's not easy to do. <laughs> Let me tell you, definitely not easy to do, um, but, you know, I'm still dealing with it. I'm still not like, I feel like I should be like, okay, I'm, I'm not, it's still like every day, it's just like this like flood of emotion and I knew that I had to film some videos talking about it and um, I today I've been all just a mess and uh, anyway I wanted to just kind of come on and talk to you guys about it because you guys have met Steven um, if you've watched my Alpha M YouTube channel he's literally been there from the beginning I've known Steven for like 16 years and um, I started posting YouTube videos back in 2008 I believe I met Steven in like 2009 because I needed somebody to cut my image consulting client's hair. And um, he's been a friend and my hairstylist ever since. And I'm gonna miss him tremendously, but I'm not alone. There are a lot of people that love him that are gonna miss him. Steven, wherever you are, thank you for everything. I love you and brother, rest easy. I'll see you someday. And uh, I just wanna say that uh, you're a legend and you're a warrior. And uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate knowing you. And you were right, we definitely were meant to meet. Love you, brother. Take care.